Good morning. With my co-organizers, Matan Gavish, Maitra Raghu, Ali Rahimi, and Ben Recht, I'd like to welcome you to the Sackler Colloquium, The Science of Deep Learning. We hope this colloquium will mark an important milestone in the progress of scientific research into this prominent new technology. Deep learning provides today's state-of-the-art method in some important vision and natural language processing tasks, and its empirical successes generated remarkable enthusiasm for deploying this technology in ways that directly impact people's lives. And yet there's a great deal we don't know scientifically about deep learning technology. As AI looms ever larger in our collective lives, the need for better scientific understanding becomes pressing. Our audience today includes a very broad group of technologists and scientists. Not only do we have insiders who have developed real-world AI applications and pioneered underlying technical tools and procedures, we have researchers from outside the usual AI community who include prominent neuroscientists, mathematicians, and physicists. Our research talks at this colloquium will range from the state of today's AI in this morning session and in tonight's annual Sackler lecture to the role of deep learning in specific scientific applications this afternoon, to theoretical and empirical studies of the properties of deep learning methods tomorrow. We would like specifically to thank representatives of the National Science Foundation, DARPA, IARPA, Department of Defense, and other U.S. government agencies for their attendance and participation in pre presentations this afternoon and tomorrow. Their participation is very timely because of the recent executive order on AI and because some current and pending funding initiatives are relevant to the topics of this colloquium. Another special feature I'd like to mention, there will be a special issue of the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences connected with this colloquium, about which I'll say more later. Scientists strive to maintain a critical perspective and an openness to critical voices. This colloquium had its origin 16 months ago in a provocation by one of our organizers, Ali Rahimi. Ali, speaking in a prominent occasion at the annual NIPS conference, raised the question whether deep learning research being presented at NIPS was science or instead pre-scientific alchemy. His remarks struck a nerve. Because of the way AI is increasingly slated to affect people's lives, we must insist on more scientific study of key technologies like deep learning, and we must offer space for critical insights. We hope today's colloquium will provide just such a space. Another special feature of the colloquium is that we have been able to accommodate many young researchers in attendance via subsidized registration waiver. Deep learning courses are phenomenally popular on many university campuses. We hope that young researchers present will engage with the colloquium presenters during question and answer periods and during breaks. Another special feature is an invited poster session held during lunch tomorrow. The session gives selected young researchers a chance to present their work related to deep learning. Just as a teaser, I'd like to mention that Ali Rahimi in his prominent NEPS presentation that I had just mentioned gave an example of a research problem where he would like to see less alchemy and more science. One of the posters tomorrow will be able to deliver important progress on fulfilling exactly that request in exactly the particular problem that Rahimi raised. These young researchers have many important things to say, and I hope we will take time over lunch tomorrow to interact with them in their posters. The National Academy of Sciences Arthur M. Sackler Colloquia are now in their 19th year of successful programs. 
Each year, the National Academy of Sciences hosts several interdisciplinary colloquia that bring together a diverse group of researchers on a topic of current and broad interest, including people who would not ordinarily have an opportunity to meet. Recent colloquia include the science of science communication, reproducibility of research, issues and proposed remedies, and status and challenges in science for decarbonizing our energy landscape. Each year, colloquium topics are proposed, reviewed, and approved by the National Academy of Sciences Committee on Scientific Programs. An academy member organizes the colloquia with an organizing committee. I'd like to thank my co-organizers, Maithra Raghu, Ali Rahimi, Ben Recht, and Matan Gavish for the many hours, emails, phone calls, and planning meetings they devoted to putting this together. I'd also like to thank Susan Marty and the NAS staff for literally round-the-clock work to make this colloquium a success. Past midnight last night before 6 a.m. this morning. And of course, I'd like to thank all the speakers and attendees for contributing precious time from their busy lives. I'd also like to acknowledge Dame Jill Sackler for her commitment to the sciences as president and CEO of the AMS Foundation for the Arts, Sciences, and Humanities, she has generously funded this program at the National Academy of Sciences in memory of her husband, Arthur M. Sackler. Uh, so I'll just make uh, one or two personal comments about the meeting itself. Those are, were my prepared comments so far. One is that uh, I, I'm really gratified by the large number of young people, particularly from the area, who have attended. I, I gave a talk at University of Maryland yesterday, and some students took me out afterwards for dinner. And uh, it's really a pleasure to see them here. I, I'd also like to say that um, the things that I was saying about the importance of critical perspective uh, it's not just words, it's really important that we provide a space, particularly in an August scientific academy, for uh, alternate viewpoints. So that even though uh, we're seeing a lot of um, important work being done in deep learning, there are a lot of successes, there are a lot of questions out there. I'll just mention two. One is, deep learning research is becoming ruinously expensive as conducted by the largest industrial organizations that are involved in it, you now see short papers of, of six pages length that involve dozens of CPU years in such a way that the cost of conducting research at that level is simply not possible for academics and universities. In addition, you see triumphalism over the scale at which the data sets are being accessed so that a researcher from, from certain industrial organizations will trumpet the fact that they were able to access more than a billion images in constructing a deep learning model. Again, work like that involving proprietary data can't be reproduced and the central claims in the paper will just remain forever in the gray literature because of that fact. At the same time, the, the benefits that come out of deep learning research ought to be shared more widely. Uh, I'm working personally with some of the attendees here in a uh, project with the Frick Museum, and we there have a problem that's akin to the image labeling and image net and where deep learning would be uh, a useful technology. On the other hand, there aren't so many labeled images, and there's certainly not a billion labeled images associated with the whole enterprise of uh, classical and contemporary art. So that it's not really possible to entertain the this, this scope of data, and we need to come up with research focused on using less data rather than more. Having critical perspectives that inject viewpoints of the type that I've just brought up is, of course, uh, very important uh, also for the young generation. 
it does no good to be modeling to the young generation that you have to be in a powerful position involving massive computing budgets because obviously they don't have access to any of those resources. They only have access to what they can do with their minds. To in inspire the next generation, we need to model to them the ability to use uh, more traditional tools of reasoning, logic, and more lightweight computing environments. Those are my impromptu remarks. Now, uh, because of some changes in the schedule, I believe we're probably running a little bit early. So, um, first of all, I'd like to ask Professor Shashu if it's okay.